Please be seated. We welcome all of you here today with us at uh, Gower um, for this uh, Palm Sunday celebration. If you've been here early, you've uh, uh, been hearing the brilliant sounds of the uh, Gower Community Band, and uh, it's always a great Sunday uh, when the band is here with us. So we thank you for your time, your talents, and uh, for your ministry of music. We also want to welcome anyone who may be listening through VOWR today, um, and we hope that wherever you are, that this service for you uh, will be um, a sign of God's presence in your life. We offer condolences today to Marjorie Rogers' family on her passing on Friday, March 15th. The funeral service took place on Tuesday, March 19th from Barrett's Memorial Chapel. The, this is Holy Week uh, coming up and you are invited to join members of the United Church community from across the Northeast Avalon for our Holy Week worship. Gower is hosting the Monday Thursday service here in our sanctuary and we welcome guest preacher Reverend Kathy Brett from Topsail United Church. The worship will also include the sacrament of Holy Communion. As well, uh, there will be an Easter vigil celebration at St. James United Church on Saturday, Easter Saturday at 7 p.m. Next Sunday is uh, Easter Sunday. We have changed up our worship schedule a little bit this year. At 9.30, there will be a contemplative worship with soft music and the sacrament of Holy Communion and prayer here in our sanctuary. 10 o'clock, you are invited to, if you're here in the sanctuary, to come downstairs for coffee and muffins uh, hosted by the Worship and Sacraments community. And if you just want to come early for the 11 a.m. Uh, Easter celebration and come have muffins and coffee with us, before you come upstairs, you're welcome to do that as well. And so next Sunday, Easter Sunday, worship at 11 with the Bell Choir, the Young People's Choir, Gower Senior Choir, special music, there will be some liturgical movement and dance, and our usual parade of butterflies. Just one service note, there is a hymn change today. Um, the last hymn will be number 127, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty, and that uh, the, the correct words will uh, come up on the screen, but uh, the wrong hymn number is in the bulletin. If uh, you don't uh, have any palms and you would like to receive some, then they're out in the uh, uh, back porch as you make your way out. 
as well, there is uh, coffee and tea and other goodies downstairs after worship, so please come uh, spend a few minutes with us before you get on with your uh, day. As a word of welcome, we also want to say that no matter who you are, where you come from, how you come to be here with us today, what you believe or what you are questioning in your life, you are welcome here with us in fullness. Please join me in the gathering words. We have gathered here week after week, sharing a common quest for a deeper faith and a deeper experience of the divine. As we close our eyes and center into this sacred space, let us be at peace. As we center into this sacred space, we let go of the things that distract and concern us. Listen, let us listen as the time is drawing near. Jesus is preparing to enter Jerusalem. How will we greet him? Will we follow him all the way to the cross? The power of Jesus is that he lived what he taught, even when it led to his death. Jesus lived with an abiding awareness of God, radiating the light of God in all he said and did. What are we willing to risk to follow Jesus? As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain of illness and disease in the world. Let us pray. Loving God, there are so many choices before us every day. Choices offered by our friends, our families, our culture, our own past. Some of them encourage the well-being of the earth, ourselves and our neighbors. Others are destructive. Help us to distinguish between them. May we learn from the choices of Jesus and embody compassion, justice, and inclusion in all we say and do. Amen. Our prayer of transformation for this morning is responsive. When I say, are you paying attention, God? I invite you to respond, we call on you. 
We pray to you, good and gracious God, by lifting up to you our heartfelt prayers. Throughout time and trial, you have led us through the wilderness on paths long and toilsome. And together we follow you to the dark hour when you will be betrayed and broken. As our faces are turned to the cross, strengthen our wearied souls that we might continue with faithful footsteps and follow the course that you have set. On this day, O oh God, you begin marching towards your death a death to which we have been sealed in our loving you. Together we are preparing to the, take the plunge into the boldness of that cold and lonely tomb. What will we find there and is there truth to be found in this week? Are you paying attention, God? We call on you. We gather as we begin Holy Week, a week though gray and dismal that is nevertheless a preparation for our own resurrection, a resurrection to which we have been sealed in our belief in your love. Together, O oh God, we are pre preparing to be renewed by the light of the empty tomb. What will we find there? As we march together to Jerusalem and to the hill of the cross, we bring with us the concerns and the failures that are on our hearts this day. Be with those who cannot feel the hope of the resurrection. Be with those who have lost loved ones, those who will struggle to sing those hallelujahs later in the week. Be with those without a voice. Be with those who are approaching their own death. And be with every one of us as we seek to prepare for your resurrection by following you to Friday. Help us to rest in the comforting truth that in life and in death we belong to you. Give us courage when we don't know the way. Give us strength when we fail. And give us hope for that which you promise us, everlasting life. Are you paying attention, God? We call on you. Answer us, O oh God, and become our healing light that we might be transformed by your love and your peace. Amen. God of growth, we hear running water beneath the ice. And soon we'll catch the sight of crocuses waking up from their winter sleep. The snow is disappearing from the pavement. And hopefully soon the wind will catch the budding branches of trees, hinting at welcome shade with signs of summer all around us. We are grateful, O oh God, for this time of promise and Lenten reflection and for this Palm Sunday. Help us always to remember that you do make all things new and that we can be a part of your hope and your renewal. May we understand that your unfailing grace is always available 
to us. We pray in the loving name of Jesus. Amen. And the gospel story today is taken from the gospel according to Mark, reading chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. And this is the story of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. Our God needs it and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, Why, what are you doing untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it. And he sat on it there. Many people then spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything and it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen.
everyone. Oh my, as I'm getting older, I'm getting harder to get down on this floor. <laughs> but you'll help me, I know. Okay, I'm going to tell, how are you guys anyways? I bet you're all thinking about the end of the week. When do you get out of school? Th Wednesday or Thursday? I don't know anymore because my kids are in university. I do not know. Wednesday. Well, you don't know. That's good. But it's Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. And then you got a week break, right? Yeah. Yes. And next week I'll see you and you'll be have 10 pounds of chocolate in you before you come to church. So yeah. it'll be a wild time. Okay. Everybody going to get a... Is Rebecca here now? Okay, there she is. She's in the back. She's usually up here. Can you help pass them out for me, Rebecca? All right. So I'm going to tell you a story today. Remember next Sunday, you got to come, because remember we put our alleluias away at the beginning of Lent? We're going to do something really fun next week with our alleluias. And it's even going to be more fun, because you're going to end up eating chocolate before you come. Okay. Here you go. Do you want one of those? Okay. Hello. Everybody got one? Oh, wow, okay. Oh, more pounds. I want to eat chocolate. I know, that's next week though. You have to get grandpa to make pancakes with chocolate chips in them. <laughs> Palms, okay. <laughs> oh, you, oh, okay. No. My gosh. All right, here we go. Woof. All right, so I'm going to tell you a story today. And I need you guys to help me with the story, okay? So it's a story about Palm Sunday, which it is today. And... There's two aspects of the story that I need you to help me with. Palm, donkey, okay? I'm calling you horsey. Horsey, okay. All right, so are you listening? You gotta put your listening ears on now because I'm gonna ask you a question of which part of the story that you need to either put your palm or your donkey Raise your palm or your donkey up. Okay? It's, it's a horsey. Okay. As Jesus approached the city of Jerusalem, he sent his disciples, and disciples are people who follow him, like us, into the city to find something to ride. Which of these things would Jesus ride into the city? Donkey. Okay. So on his way to the city gates, the people there gathered to see him. They cheered for him and they waved something. And they laid that same something on the ground in front of him. What do you think they waved and laid on the ground? Palms, right. You palm. guys are smart. Are these real palms? They are real palms. So as the people cheered for Jesus, the disciples and others started to get very nervous because all the cheering was drawing attention to him. So they told Jesus to ask everyone to be quiet. And so this is why we call today Palm Sunday. Those gathered in the city that day wanted to make a special pathway for Jesus to enter. And so the road was laid with palms because where Jesus lived when he was alive on this earth, they had palm branches and palm trees, and so that's why there were palms. And so Jesus rode on a very ordinary animal when he went into the city, which was a donkey, because it was easy to be found around. So those gathered were just beginning to realize how important Jesus really was. Some people who were there became afraid and uneasy because many in the crowd were cheering for Jesus. But Jesus' work and Jesus' ministry continues through all of us here gathered today. 
his disciples as we follow, as we continue to follow his teachings. And Rebecca is going to talk a little bit about something else. Thank you for helping me in the story. And I know you're trying to make, someone's trying to make rabbit ears out of the palms on my head. <laughs> so, since these palms were so special to Jesus, we don't like to just throw them away after Palm Sunday. So there's three things that traditionally congregations do with them. Does anybody know what they might be? No. Keep no. them. Keep them. Yeah. So some people keep them. Some people keep them just as a palm branch. And some people keep them and make them into a cross. Some people bury them in the ground so they can return to the earth. And some people burn them to make ashes to use on Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent the next year. Yeah. So my parents made palm crosses for each of you to keep with your other cross. And if anybody in the congregation would like a palm cross, give me your palm at the end of the service and I will bring you back a palm cross next week because we don't know how to make because them. we don't know how to make them <laughs> i get taught every year and then i forget every yeah. year I'm making him a man. you're making him a man very good okay so enjoy the rest of your time with reverend rebecca and we'll see you downstairs or we'll see you next sunday thanks everyone i want to keep the donkey you can keep the donkey So over the years, I have come to Palm Sunday with conflicting thoughts. The pomp and pageantry are met with betrayal and tragedy as we move into this holiest of weeks. You may all have your thoughts and feelings about this day and where it leads. This year, though, as I reflected on the gospel reading throughout the week, I thought many times about this question as I continued to read the gospel. Why did Jesus leave the temple and go to Bethany? Why did he that day leave the temple and go to Bethany? And I think the answer to that question and the implications of that answer hold the key to our Holy Week. So let us recall what happened. Jesus is in a parade. He is riding a borrowed colt or horse. It is a march, a movement. We call it the triumphal entry. People are in front of and behind Jesus. They are shouting their hosannas. They are throwing down palms and their cloaks for him to ride on. They are rolling out the red carpet. There is excitement and there is anticipation. So Jesus rides into Jerusalem. He enters the temple. He looks around at everything that is there and he leaves. He does nothing. He says nothing. He just leaves. He goes to Bethany, we are told. 
it is indeed a strange and an anticlimactic ending to the triumphal entry. So it sounds to me like Jesus here is retreating and trying to get out of town. What is this all about? Did Jesus have somewhere else that he needed to be at that moment? I wonder if Jesus was wavering a bit, not sure, not as sure as when he started his ride. Maybe he was having some doubts, some questions, and he just wanted to get away and not wanting to face the extremely difficult situation which lay ahead. Could that be what his leaving the temple is about? Again, as I re was reflecting this week, I thought, this is such a strange and anticlimactic ending to the triumphal entry that it makes me think that there has to be something significant that lies within, and it is unique. So Mark's is the only one of the four Gospels to describe this. In Matthew, the whole city is in turmoil when Jesus enters. Jesus goes to the temple, he drives out those who are buying and selling, and he overturns tables and chairs. In Luke, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem and then enters the table where he drives out those who are buying and selling. And in John's account, Jesus does not even go to the temple. He cleansed it at the beginning of the gospel, and instead he enters the city and begins teaching lessons. So Mark's is the only gospel that says Jesus entered the temple, looked around, and then he left. So why did Jesus leave the temple and go to Bethany? Well, the gospel tells us why. Jesus left the temple as it was already late. So that got me wondering again. What if this is about something more than just the time of day? What if Jesus is late getting somewhere or doing something? What might Jesus be late for here? And then after reading the gospel again and again, I thought, could Jesus have been late getting that colt back to its owner? Could Jesus have been late getting the colt back to its owner? And here is why I say that. There is another unique aspect about Mark's account of the triumphal entry. He is the only one to say that Jesus promised to return the colt to its owner. All of the other Gospels agree that the colt was either borrowed from its owner or found. But it is only in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus speaks about returning the colt. Jesus sent two disciples to borrow this colt and told them if anyone asked why they were taking the colt, they were to say, God needs it and will send it back here immediately. And that is what they did. So what if that is why Jesus left the temple that day and why he went directly to Bethany with the disciples? Maybe he left so he could keep his promise and follow through on what he said he would do. Maybe this is about Jesus being true to himself and keeping his word. But what if this is about Jesus staying centered within himself, despite what the weak might hold ahead for him? And what if returning the colt is a metaphor for us as we enter into and walk through this holiest of weeks? What might returning the colt mean for us throughout this week. It is an image or metaphor to ponder, and it raises a couple of questions. 
First, what do you need to return to this week? What do you need to let go of or release? We all have stuff, including me, that we have carried around with us for far too long. And it is no longer able to take us anywhere or to provide us life. It is just baggage that we carry that continues to weigh us down. It impoverishes life and it corrupts our heart. So what do you need to let go of, release and return to this week? It, is it a grudge or a resentment? Is it anger, fear, disappointment or grief? Is it regret? Is it envy? Could Holy Week be the time to return and release it all to the Holy One? Trusting that God can do something with this stuff that we are simply never able to do just on our own. And what if returning and releasing this stuff is also about returning to ourselves? What if it is about returning to our center, to our hearts and to our spirit? What if it is about reclaiming our truest self? That means we could then move forward not from that same old place, but from a place of hope and renewed life. That is what Jesus did. He stayed true to himself throughout this week, and so must we. And perhaps returning the cult is ultimately about returning to our original self, that self of beauty and goodness that God created in and has loved from the very beginning. And what if those are our movements throughout this holy week? Returning, releasing, and letting go. Returning to and reclaiming those parts of ourselves that have been lost, ignored, forgotten, put aside, denied, or shelved. And even as we carry around the stuff that needs to be returned, so also there are parts of ourselves and our life to which we need to return. What if this week all of us returned to ourselves? And more specifically, what do you in your life need to return to? What if we return to joy, to hope, to beauty, to truth and honesty? What if we came back to justice, mercy, and forgiveness? What if we reclaimed the dignity and the wholeness of each and every human life? What if we recentered ourselves in peace and in courage? What if we returned to love of neighbor, self, and even enemy? Coming back to ourselves would be like a new life, would it not? So I invite all of you to begin this week by returning that cult. Why, what do you need to return? To answer that, you must look around at everything. And that is what Jesus did. This week is an invitation for us to look around and discern everything outside of us, and also to look at everything within us. Look at what is there, look at what is missing, look at what you need, what you feel, who you truly are and who you want to be, and then return the cult. Take that image of returning the cult with you this week. Take it wherever you go, bring it to whatever you do, Hold it as you pray during this holiest of weeks. Let it be present as you live your life wherever you go. 
as you engage people in relationships, whether in your family, at work, at school, at home, or in the lineup at the grocery store. Returning the colt is how Holy Week begins. Returning to God and ourselves is the promise of how this week will end. So look around at everything, outside and within, and then go, return the colt. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. At Easter, we gather around the empty tomb, excited to see the symbol of our risen Christ. This Easter, Mission and Service is supporting education programs across Canada and around the world. Give the gift of education of support and of renewal. Easter is a symbol of hope. Join us in building up our neighbors. Have a happy and joyful Easter. As we gather our gifts in praise and thanksgiving to God and in response to Jesus' love, shown in the cross and as a sign of our faithfulness let us offer our gifts to the work of god's church here on earth our offering is received in many ways uh, at gower street united through our time and our talents through the postal system through e-transfer through plenty at canada helps and our offering plates are found at the back of our sanctuary, or you may scan the QR code, which is found in your bulletin. And we thank you for your donations. And let us pray. Gracious God, may what we have offered of ourselves, of our resources, of our time, become a rainbow of blessing, of light, for an aching world among those of us gathered here, for our local community and for our world, blessed by the power of your abundant grace. Amen. 
In this time, I invite you to uh, take some quiet time to reflect in the beauty of our sanctuary as we enter into Holy Week. May uh, those words that are found on your hearts and in your spirits be present in our time together. Gracious and loving God, we pray today for our world, for places where there is hunger and violence, where families are suffering and children are hurt. We pray, O oh God, for peace, that somehow the leaders of our world would come to know a pathway to justice and love. We pray, O oh God, for our community here, for those who lay within, who are sick, who are lonely. We pray also, O oh God, for those who wander the streets just outside our door, we pray, O oh God, that you might bless them and that they would come to know that our doors are always open. And we pray, O oh God, for ourselves, that in this holiest of weeks that we might empty ourselves of those things which are causing us trouble and weighing us down that we might open our hearts and our spirits and our minds to your love, that you might walk with us as we prepare ourselves for the holiest of Fridays and also for the hope and new life that is found in Easter Sunday. And we ask all of these things in the prayer which Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, please join us downstairs for a coffee and conversation, as well um, any of the services uh, next week, as well as Monday, Thursday. You are all welcome to come. They will be in-house, and they will be also uh, live streamed.
us go into this holy week trusting in the grace of God. When our strength fails, may we still find the courage to turn toward the cross to our King who wears a crown of thorns and serve his world with compassion. Go and remember that all our lives are held in God's gracious hand. Amen.